Dear learners, today we will discuss a chapter on laws of motion. In the previous lesson, we have learned to describe the motion of an object in terms of its displacement, velocity and acceleration. But an important question is, what makes an object to move or what causes a ball rolling to come to a stop? From our everyday experience, we know that we need to push or pull an object to change its position. Football has to be kicked in order to send it over a large distance. You will agree that muscular activity is involved in all these actions and its effect is quite visible. There are however many situations where the cause behind an action is not visible. For example, what makes raindrops to fall to the ground? What makes the earth to go around the sun? In this lesson, you will learn the basic laws of motion and discover that force causes motion. After studying this lesson, you will be able to explain the significance of inertia, state Newton's laws of motion and illustrate them with examples, derive mathematical relation between force and acceleration, calculate linear momentum and impulse. We all know that stationary objects remain wherever they are placed. These objects cannot move on their own from one place to another place unless forced to change their state of rest. Similarly, an object moving with constant velocity has to be forced to change its state of motion. So, from all these examples, we can now define inertia. So, what is inertia? The property of an object by which it resists a change in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line is called inertia. So, mass of a body is a measure of its inertia. More the mass, more will be the inertia. The change in velocity of an object can only be brought if a net force acts on it. You are very familiar with the term force. Earlier you have studied about force in your secondary classes. We use it in so many situations in our everyday life. We are exerting force when we are pulling, pushing, kicking, hitting, etc. Though a force is not visible, its effect can be seen or experienced. Forces are known to have different kinds of effects. So what are the different effects of force? They may change the shape and the size of an object. For example, a balloon changes shape depending on the magnitude of force acting on it. Forces also influence the motion of an object. A force can set an object into motion or it can bring a moving object to rest. A force can also change the direction or speed of motion. Forces can rotate a body about an axis. Force is a vector quantity. For this reason, when several forces act on a body simultaneously, a net equivalent force can be calculated by vector addition. Motion of a body is characterized by its displacement, velocity, etc. We come across many situations where the velocity of an object is either continuously increasing or decreasing. For example, in case of a body falling freely, the velocity of the body increases continuously till it hits the ground. Similarly, in the case of a ball rolling on a horizontal surface, the velocity of the ball decreases continuously and ultimately becomes zero. Now, let us discuss what is force and motion and what is the relation between force and motion. A net non-zero force is required to change the state of a body. For a body in motion, the velocity will change depending on the direction of the force acting on it. If a net force acts on a body in motion, its magnitude of velocity will decrease if the direction of net force is opposite to the direction of motion. The magnitude of velocity of the body remains constant and only the direction changes if the net force acts on a body in a direction perpendicular to its velocity. Now, let us discuss about first law of motion. We see that in order to move a trolley at constant velocity, it has to be continuously pushed or pulled. So, is there any net force acting on the trolley in the situation mentioned here? You may logically ask, why is it necessary to apply a force continuously to the trolley to keep it moving uniformly? We know that a force on the cart is needed for balancing out the force of friction on the cart. That is, the force of friction on the trolley can be overcome 
by continuously pushing or pulling it. To study the motion of objects and the relation between force and motion, Galileo conducted an experiment. He observed body is accelerated while moving down and is retarded while moving up an inclined plane as you can see in the first figure. If it is a horizontal plane surface, the body will move with a uniform speed or uniform velocity if there is no external force as you can see in the second figure. From these two activities, we can find out what is Newton's first law of motion. Isaac Newton generalized the Galileo's conclusions in the form of a law known as Newton's first law of motion. Newton's first law of motion states that a body continues to be in a state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless it is acted upon by net external force. You have earlier read about many examples of Newton's first law of motion in your secondary classes. So there is no need to again repeat them. For example, when a jerk is given to a carpet, dust particle comes out. This is an application of or example of Newton's first law of motion. So now let us discuss momentum. You must have seen that a fielder finds it difficult to stop a cricket ball moving with a large velocity although its mass is small. Similarly, it is difficult to stop a truck moving with a small velocity because its mass is large. But when you are playing with a toy truck, it is possible or easy to stop a toy truck because its mass is less. From all these examples, we can suggest that both mass and velocity of a body are important when you study the effect of force on the motion of the body. The product of mass m of a body and its velocity v is called its linear momentum p. So mathematically we can write p or momentum equal to m into v that is mass into velocity. Momentum is a vector quantity. The direction of momentum vector is the same as the direction of velocity vector. Its SI unit is kg meter per second. For example, a 1 kg object is dropped and is allowed to fall freely at t equal to 0 second. Calculate its momentum at t equal to 0 second and t equal to 2 second. Let us solve this numerical. At t equal to 0 second, v equal to 0 that is velocity equal to 0. Hence, the momentum p equal to mass into velocity which is equal to 0. But at t equal to 2 second, the velocity v2 equal to 0 plus 9.8 into 2. Here we have used the formula v equal to u plus at as here acceleration equal to z that is acceleration due to gravity and which is equal to 9.8 meter per second square we have taken z equal to 9.8 and t equal to 2 second. So the final velocity v2 equal to 19.6 meter per second. Hence the momentum at t equal to 2 second that is p2 equal to mv2 that is equal to 1 into 19.6 which is equal to 19.6 kg meter per second. Here the mass is 1 kg, hence we have put m equal to 1. So here we can see that the velocity and the momentum of the body increases in magnitude as the time increases. Now let us discuss second law of motion. The momentum of a ball falling on freely under gravity increases with time. Since such a body falls under the action of gravitational force acting on it, there appears to be a connection between change in momentum of an object and the net force acting on it and the time for which it is acting. It states that or the second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the net force acting on the body. Change in momentum of the body takes place in the direction of net external force acting on the body. If delta p is the change in momentum of a body in time delta t due to a net external force f we can write force f is proportional to del p by del t. So we can write f equal to k del p by del t where k is the constant of proportionality. So that is equal to k m del v by del t as del p equal to m delta v. So now you can write force equal to k m into a where del v by del t equal to a which is acceleration. So now 
वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ कॉन्स्टेंट के द वैल्यू ऑफ कॉन्स्टेंट के डिपेंड्स अपॉन द यूनिट्स ऑफ एम एंड ए दैट इज मास एंड एक्सेलरेशन वेन एम इक्वल टू वन यूनिट ए इक्वल टू वन यूनिट एंड फोर्स इक्वल टू वन यूनिट वी कैन पुट ऑल दिस इन द इक्वेशन एफ इक्वल टू के एम ए देन दिस कम्स आउट टू बी वन इक्वल टू के इंटू वन इंटू वन तो नाउ फ्रॉम ऑल दिस वी कैन फाइंड आउट दैट वैल्यू ऑफ के इक्वल टू वन नाउ पुट दिस वैल्यू ऑफ के इन द इक्वेशन एफ इक्वल टू के एम ए तो दैट बिकम्स एफ इक्वल टू एम ए नाउ वट आर फोर्सेस इन पेयर्स इट इज द ग्रेविटेशनल पूल ऑफ द अर्थ विच अलाउज एंड ऑब्जेक्ट टू एक्सिलेट टूवर्ड्स द अर्थ टॉज द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑल्सो पुल द अर्थ सिमिलरली वेन वी पूस एन आलमीरा डज द अलमीरा ऑल्सो पूस ऑस इफ सो वाई डोंट वी मूव इन द डिरेक्शन ऑफ दैट फोर्स दिस सिचुएशन कंपेल्स ऑस टू आस्क वेदर ए सिंगल फोर्स सच एस ए पुश और पुल एग्जिस्ट इट हेज बीन ऑब्जर्व दैट एक्शन ऑफ टू बॉडीज ऑन ईच अदर आर ऑलवेज म्यूचुअल हियर बाय एक्शन एंड रिएक्शन वी मेन फोर्सेज ऑफ इंटरेक्शन सो वेन एवर टू बॉडीज इंटरेक्ट दे एक्जैक्ट फोर्स ऑन ईच अदर वन ऑफ देम इज कॉल्ड एक्शन एंड द अदर इज कॉल्ड रिएक्शन दस वी कैन से दैट फोर्सेज ऑलवेज एग्जिस्ट इन पेयर्स नाउ फ्रॉम दिस we can state newton's third law of motion newton's third law of motion states that to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction thus when a book placed on a table exerts some force on the table and the table also exerts a force of equal magnitude on the book in the upward direction so now we can say action and reaction act on different bodies and therefore they do not cancel out the action and reaction in a given situation appear as a pair of forces alternatively we can state third law of motion as when two objects interact the force exerted by one object on the other is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the force exerted by the latter object on the former if f12 is the force which object 1 experience due to object 2 and f21 is the force with object 2 experiences due to object 1 then according to newton's third law of motion f12 equal to minus f21 now what is impulse the effect of force applied for a short duration is called impulse impulse is defined as the product of force f and the time duration delta t for which the force is applied so we can write impulse equal to f dot delta t if the initial and final velocities of a body acted upon by a force f r u and v respectively then impulse equal to f dot delta t impulse is equal to change in linear momentum impulse is a vector quantity and si unit of impulse is kg meter per second now let us summarize what we have studied till now the inertia of a body is its tendency to resist any change in its state of rest or uniform motion newton's first law states that a body remains in a state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line as long as net external force acting on it is zero for a single particle of mass m moving with velocity v we define a vector quantity p called the linear momentum as p equal to mv newton's second law states that the time rate of change of momentum of a body is proportional to the resultant force acting on the body according to newton's second law acceleration produced in a body of constant mass is directly proportional to net external force acting on the body so f equal to m into a newton's third law states that if two bodies a and b interact with each other then the force which body a exerts on body b will be equal and opposite to the force which body b exerts on body a i hope you have understood what we have discussed today later in this chapter in an another session we will later discuss what is conservation of momentum and friction wishing you all the best thank you